Compact Bible Dictionary, edited by T. Allen Wright. Regency Reference Library, Zondervan Publishing House. We're on page 267. Okay, we're going to get into the understanding of Japheth's son, Javan. It says, a region settled by one of the sons of Japheth. Genesis 10 verse 2, Javan was the name of this country to Ezekiel, who saw it as an important trade center. So Javan, notice in parentheses it says Greek, Ionian, came to the name of Greece to the Hebrews. Okay, so Javan became known as Greece. Genesis chapter 10, now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood, the sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, that's the one we want to look at, Javan, Japheth's son Javan, who became known as Greece, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tyrus, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Riftah, and Togomar, and the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, and Kittim, Kittim is called Rome today. And Doadim. So we want to concentrate on Javan, son of Japheth, because there's two thoughts out there amongst the Israelites. One, that Japheth has always remained in power, never was conquered, always stayed in their land. And the other school of thought is that Esau conquered everybody and removed Japheth, son Javan, and replaced them. Let's see what happened. Okay, this name of this book is African Presence in Early Europe, edited by Ivan Van Sertima. All right, I'm on page 67 of this book. I want to look at the underlying portion. I'm getting to the point. The true home of the Greeks before they won domination in Greece had passed clean out of their remembrance and they looked to the east not to the north as the quarters from which some of their ancestors had migrated so now it says the true home of the Greeks before they won dom dominion in Greece wait a minute the true home of the Greeks before they won dominion in Greece hmm meaning somebody was conquered had what had passed clean out of their remembrance. So the Greeks won dominion over somebody in Greece and their origin they have forgotten. It passed clean out of their remembrance. Let's pan down. Let's go right here. According to it, Greece had originally been inhabited by primitive tribes. I can't pronounce that word, Pelasgians and others, and had then been settled by Egyptians and Phoenicians who had built cities and introduced irrigation. Hmm. So Greece was originally inhabited, Greece had originally been inhabited by primitive tribes, and they're calling them the people that were there first, Egyptians and Phoenicians. Hmm. So the Greeks before they won dominion in Greece they conquered some primitive tribes they think were Egyptians and Phoenicians hmm let's examine that a little more closer okay this is page 90 of the chapter called blacks in antiquity Ethiopians and the Greco-Roman experience hmm let's go over to page 91 shall we I'm going to start right here. I'm getting to the point on these things because this issue must end. For example, he finds that the word Ethiopian was used by Greeks to refer to the sunburnt or black-faced distinctions between types of Ethiopians, black-faced people, such as Eastern or Western Ethiopians, as well as their various shades of black color. Snowden examines the language of Greece and Rome and finds that it is full of references 
to the color of black people such as Afro, African, Indus, Indians, Morris, Moor, Milas. These words were used as equivalents for Ethiopian. So you, when you read Greek history, you can find all these words which make reference to Ethiopians or people with burnt faces, black-faced people. Okay? Hold on now. Here's another book Frank, by Frank M. Snowden, Jr. called Blacks in Antiquity. We're on page 22. The physical characteristics of Ethiopians are archaeological evidence. Ah, let's get to the point here. I'm going to start at the word hence. Hence, the long history of the Negro in classical art must be examined for the light that it throws on certain physical types which the Greeks and Romans had in mind whenever they used the word Ethiopian, meaning faces burnt, and for a record of many Negroes seen at different periods. On the streets of Alexandria, Athens, where's Athens? Greece, Rome, Kittim, okay, and elsewhere. The significance of the word Ethiopian, unless supplemented by archaeological evidence, cannot be fully understood. So this author writes that the, the Greeks and Romans used the word Ethiopian many times in describing dark-skinned people. It says, and without archaeological evidence cannot be fully understood. Why do you always did that? Okay, let's go over to the beginning of this chapter. Art in some respects, art in some respects more valuable than literature as a source of information for anthropological data because it tells us much that the texts do not about the amount of prognathism or its total absence, the extent of, you know, giant words here, meaning you need art to identify who the Greeks were, who Rome was, who the people are that are being referenced. Okay, on the, in the same book, Blacks and Antiquities, I'm going to jump down to the, what they say about the wars in Greece. We all saw the movie, uh, what was it? Mm, Troy, where you had Achilles and Agamemnon, Ag Agamemnon, 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 whatever you say his name. Watch this. In a description of another scene of the Trojan War, Philostrophus notes that the pure black of Memnon's face, you remember Memnon, that was the guy Achilles couldn't stand, shows a certain ruddiness, that means youthfulness, okay, and adds that in Ethiopia, Memnon was transformed into a statue of black marble. Further, in earlier accounts, Memnon had been preferred to as a king of the Ethiopians or as a leading Ethiopian to, leading Ethiopians to Troy, and no, and no mention was made of his color. In the Roman period, however, Memnon was considered at times definitely black in Ethiopian. Now I'm going to go to page 48 to show you what this Greek Memnon looked like. Because they're saying he's Ethiopian. Okay, let's go to page 48. Shall we? Oh, here we go. This is the art they were talking about that you need. Detail of heads of Memnon and Negroes from black figured neck amphora. 530, what's the year in this? 530 years before Christ. With, and this is about um, 200 or something years before Alexander, the Greek. Look at Memnon. Look at his soldiers with him. All black. This is Japhet, okay? They use the word Ethiopian to describe any dark-skinned people. Any brown-skinned people they call Ethiopian. Memnon was of Javan. This is Javan, son of Japheth, okay? This is who these people are, Okay? Now let's get a closer look. Detail of one of Memnon's Negro companions. Black figured neck and four, 540 to 530 
BC. Oh, there you go, there you go. These are the descendants, not of Cush, but of Japheth. These were the original inhabitants of Greece. What happened to them? Hmm. Okay, here's another one. Greek artifacts, archaeology. Look at these Greeks. Look at these Greeks. Hmm.